means, so be it. So the title of my message tonight is Faith in God Will Always Work. Faith in God will always work work. There are some people who refute that. There are some people who don't believe that. I don't care because true, real Bible faith will always work. Bible faith will always get results. We see it in the Bible. Now, are there people who don't get results? Absolutely. But were they in faith? Absolutely not because faith gets results. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. We're still in the series of Respond. Uh, We show the logo of Respond for me, Donovan. For those people, if you don't have iPhones, this is what a response looks like. Just kidding. Do they have that? I did, never did figure that out. They don't have that. That's okay. This means that someone is about to respond, right? They're typing something. They're writing the longest message ever. They need to hurry up, whatever. But to respond, we've been saying, is to speak in return, to say something. And through text message, obviously, they're texting you an answer. But we're talking about when circumstances, when pressures in life come up, when lies of the enemy come up, what do we do? We respond with our word. We put God's word in our mouth, and we talk back to those symptoms. We talk back to lack. We talk back to fear. Pastor Charity says it this way. I love to quote her because she's an amazing minister. Can I get an amen? Amen. (laughs) <laughs> Brownie points right there, y'all. No, she is, man. She's so anointed. I'm just like, wow, I, God, I don't know how you pulled this off, but man, thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she says this, you don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. You respond. So we have to learn to respond, and we've talked about it over the past weeks. If we don't put anything into the picture and we try to pour it out, what's coming out? Nothing. See, that's why we have to put God's word on the inside of us so that when the pressure of life, we said it like if you put a sponge in in blue water and you squeeze that sponge, blue water's coming out. Whatever you're putting in, that's the only thing that can come out when pressure hits you. Maybe it's all the cuss words in the book. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Y'all ever been under pressure and you said something you should have said? Come on, somebody. But the thing is, what you're putting in absolutely matters. We have to feed on the right things. The enemy, man, he is like, you know, have you ever been, anybody ever been to like a a bigger city where guys are like slinging CDs and stuff? Like in New York and Chicago. Did you buy a CD, Donovan? (laughs) You bought, he's like, yeah, I bought one. Did it have anything on it? It did, it was good, it was good. Right, but they're hustling, man. They're trying to make those sales, you know, and that's fine, that's their thing, That's that's their deal. But the enemy, man, he's hustling. And you know what he's selling? He's selling lies. The reason I said that is because there, there have been people that are known to sell CDs and there's literally, literally nothing on them. <laughs> but he's selling lies, y'all. And the problem is so much of the church is buying into some of these lies, and I don't want that to be you guys. And the ball is absolutely in your court. You have to know what the Word of God says. And I know, listen, listen, y'all, I get it. This is a big book <laughs> with a lot of pages and a lot of letters. Pastor Charity told the youth, like, a lot of times I like to listen to the Word. I told y'all, sometimes y'all listen, I'm listening to the Word, and then, like, the next thing I know, I'm like, I'm dreaming. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gone. But the thing is, the Word, it, it, the Bible is so full of answers, It's so full of life. It's so full of joy. It's so full of peace. Now, you could take a couple of scriptures and take them out of context and get totally confused, or or you could take a scripture that has a lot of these and thous, and of course, we we may not fully understand the depths of that scripture, but but the bottom line is there's so much truth in here that's really not as hard as people have made it. So we're going to break down some scriptures tonight. Real faith always gets result. If it didn't work, it wasn't God's fault. God is never at fault. A lot of times people blame God. I'm sure you've probably heard that before. Anybody heard that before? And listen, I get it. And here's the thing that was probably important for all of us to understand. At the funeral, probably not the time to tell him, hey, it wasn't God's fault, man. This was his fault. This dude, that's on him, man. He, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, save your truth maybe for a better time. Do you know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is God never fails. He is faithful. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. Has anyone in this room besides me ever said you would be there at a certain time and you wasn't there? Come on, somebody. We've all been late. We said we would be there, but we weren't. God doesn't fail. He never misses the mark. He never makes a mistake. He, like literally, when he says it, he's bound by his word and he does it. He is faithful. So again, we want to understand these things because this paints a picture like all of us probably have that friend who when they say, yeah, I'll be there, you'd be like, probably not. You already know. He said he's coming, but he ain't coming. Come on. You know what I'm saying? But we have to know about God's character. If he said it, my God, he will absolutely do it. 
We have to, men, we got to be persuaded. Persuaded. How do we get persuaded? Well, we feed on the word. We feed on the word. We feed on the word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to continue hearing. You can't be like, oh yeah, I heard that. I'm good. No, you have to continue and continue. The Bible tells us that continue in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. We have to continue in the word. So no matter what happens, always stay on God's side. You know what I mean? Like if you're in a fight, listen, God, you pick a side. I'm going with you (laughs) wherever you go. You know what I mean? Always stay on God's side because the moment you find yourself on the opposite side of God, you are absolutely wrong and you will absolutely lose because God never fails. And so we always stay on God's side. We have to understand his character. So important. Let's get into 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We may have some of these on the screen, but I just want you to jot the references down. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. If our enemy, our adversary, the Bible tells us we have an adversary. This isn't like float through life and nothing bad ever happens. No, you have an adversary. He's literally looking to jack you up. But it says, as a roaring lion, it doesn't say he's powerful and mighty, mighty, like he is a lion, it says as a lion. He's masquerading, he's pretending to be something that he is not. He's pretending to be far uh, more powerful than he actually is. Why? Because the Bible tells us that he's already been defeated. The Bible says that Jesus made a show of him openly. Like, like literally just mopped the floor with him. Pathetic, hilarious. Like I love to talk about it because I know it's just so embarrassing for the enemy. My God, just pathetic. Pathetic performance. Anybody ever had a pathetic performance before? Like when I was on the C team and I was riding the bench, man, that was pathetic. <laughs> but the thing is, Jesus made a show of him openly. He is an adversary. His greatest tool, does anybody know what his greatest tool is? Deception. Pastor Charity. It's exactly right. Deception. There's no deception like self-deception. It's like when somebody thinks they don't have BO, but they do. It's like, listen, bro, you have gone nose blind. You have BO, you need a shower and deodorant. But deception, man, that's his tool. If he can get you to think that you're powerless, if he can get you to think that it's okay for sickness to be in your life, you're done. But if you feed on God's word, faith will come and you'll know, man, this is absolutely something that Jesus has already paid for. And I will not stand for it in my life. That's like, like, that's how real Christians are supposed to be. It's like salty. Like, you know what I mean? Like just a little bit, a little bit punchy. Like bring it on Satan. I know you're, I know you're coming at me anyway, but bring it on because I've got power over all your power. God said he would not have me to be ignorant of your devices. Meaning like, I'm going to see it before it gets here. It's like that telegraph punch. <laughs> it's never going to land. You're going to get knocked out. All right. The Bible says we have an adversary. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Oh, man. That sounds lousy. <laughs> That's where he lives. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Both words mean destroyer or destruction. What do you think the enemy's plans are for your life? Destruction. He's literally the destroyer. That's all he knows. He's trying to jack with your health. He's trying to jack with your finances. He's trying to jack with your family. He's trying to jack with your future. He's trying to jack with your confidence. He's trying to jack with your joy. He's trying to jack with your peace. Can I, you know what I'm saying? Like what if, fill in the blank. He's trying to bring destruction to your life. It's so, it's so really sad to me just because I love people. When people, when they bow up and they, they, you know, you know what I mean to bow up, like, when two guys are about to throw down, it's like, oh, it's about to happen. <laughs> Come on. Let me get my phone out. Hold on. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when people bow up against God, it's so sad. It's like, man, you're so foolish. You, you, you don't see it. And, and I don't mean to call them a fool. I'm just saying it is foolish for anyone to bow up against God because God is love. He's the giver of life. John 3, 16, the, the verse that most, a lot of people know. God so loved this world that he gave He's a giver, not a taker. That has, man, that has to be so real. And here's the the reason that that I believe it's not as real as it should be. Because if you believe that it's God's will for you to be sick, or you believe that like, well, maybe just God's going to help me if he he decides to help me, then, then you don't believe in the love that he has for you. 
Because the word of God very clearly says that by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. He sent his word and healed us. He already made up his mind. So if you, if you don't believe that, then, then it's not real enough to you. The Bible talks about us knowing and believing in the love that he has for us. For many of you, probably everybody in this room has been abandoned or neglected or, you, you know, in some way you've been emotionally hurt by somebody. I, I know that's true. You didn't get invited to that birthday party. Okay, get over it. That was in the third grade. But honestly, all of us, we deal with hurts. We deal with pains. We deal with, with rejection. But you know what? Jesus was rejected so that you would never have to feel rejected. You may feel rejected in and of your soul, in and of your feelings, but at the end of the day, you can know, man, I am absolutely deeply loved by God. No matter what I've done, no matter what mistakes I've made, no matter what my past is, talks about him casting it into the sea of forgetfulness. I love that. A lot of times we repent, we ask God for forgiveness, and we're right with him, we're righteous, but, and, and God has cast it into the sea of forgetfulness, but we keep bringing it up, or we allow the enemy to keep bringing it up in our mind. And what does that do? That undermines your confidence. But if you allow the word to be the final authority in your life, then when it says that you're deeply loved by God, you'll actually begin to believe it. It's a process. It does take time. It takes work. The wall. Life takes time. It takes time to get over your insecurities. It takes time to build confidence that, man, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. I'm absolutely healed right now. It takes time to build that. That's on you. So we know we've got the adversary. We've got Apollyon, Baden, whatever his name is. Those are kind of like, that's like Marvel status, you know, names. The destroyer, <laughs> destruction. Except they would paint him like all cool and just really evil and super powerful. But he's not. He's powerless. He's toothless. Man, he got whooped bad. Isaiah, no, John 8, 44. says, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's the verse we referenced earlier. He's literally the father of lies. He's constantly lying to you. That's why it's so important that you fellowship with God, that you spend time in his word, that you come to church, which all of you are at church. Good job. That's a big part of it because we have to uh, renew our mind is the way the Bible says it. Like literally like reprogram. JJ's a programmer. He's on his computer doing codes and stuff. And we're all like, my Starbucks app doesn't work. You know what I mean? JJ's like, ah, I hit the wrong button. Ah. You know what I mean? The coders do what they do and we just do like, I just want the GUI interface. You know what I mean? I want to press the button and I want it to work right now. See, God loves you, but if you don't get into this word, then that that reality of his love for you, it won't get on the inside of you. You may mentally assent to it like, yeah, I believe God loves me. No, you don't. When you believe God loves you, it's real to you. It's not like, yeah, I, I believe. No, I believe it. He loves me. He's for me. He protects me. He provides for me. He has a plan for me. There's a difference. You guys get it. Isaiah 14, 12. You are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. I just love that. Did y'all know he fell like lightning? Just that's, have y'all ever seen lightning? That would be awesome to see. Could we get that on replay in 4K, Father? <laughs> Son of the morning, you are cut down to the ground. You who, who did weaken the nation. Again, about his destructive nature. You know, what you have to understand is that through his deception, he's trying to get you into fear. He's trying to get you into doubt. He's trying to get you into unbelief. What is unbelief? Well, it's like the opposite of faith. See, and when you tolerate fear, guess what happens to your faith? It gets contaminated. You know, if, if um, believing in the love of God and, and faith in his goodness and trust in him, like if that's the foundation for all of our other endeavors of faith to work, if you allow just one little bit of fear, it would be like a hairline fracture. It may not be real obvious, it may not be real visible, but it is absolutely detrimental. You know, we talked about that tower that's leaning and not in a cool gangster lean way, but like it's leaning like 18 inches leaning and it's sinking. Well, there's problems with the foundation. God wants to help you and faith in God will absolutely work. So here's what I'm saying. You have to actually have faith that he cares about you. Right where you live, he knows your name. He knows your annoying 
siblings or cousins or whoever, or your boss or whatever. He knows everything about your life. And he absolutely wants to take you to the next level. Financially, in your peace, in your health, in your joy, and just your fulfillment. You know how I know that? Because he's doing that for me every single day. If you think for a minute that I even, I didn't know where Hobbs, New Mexico was. But I'm just so fulfilled. I'm in there, and I go in here with the, with the little kids. How old are those kids, Yasmin, that y'all are in there with? K through fifth. And dude, they're screaming and it's like chaos. And I'm like, I'm like almost panic attack. Just like, ah. okay guys, let's get down off the chairs. And, and Yasmin's all cool. Cause she's used to kids ministry. And I'm like, is it okay if they're, you know what I mean? It's just crazy. But it's like, I, I love my life in the midst of all of that panic and anxiety and chaos. You know what I mean? It's just like, this is the best. Every single thing we're doing. We've got these young people. We've got spring training in there. Uh, we've got the, the six or 12th graders in there. It's amazing. But see, all of those things didn't come because I sat down and was like, okay, I'm going to figure out a good plan. for. I'm going to figure out a 10-year plan for my life. It says, no, God, I believe that you're God and I'm not. I believe that you know the beginning from the end, and I don't. See, when I do that, I'm automatically exalting him. I'm magnifying him as the God who is the only God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So many times we say, God, yes, you're the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords, but we go and do our own thing. Well, he is God, but he ain't your God. Does that make sense? So for all of us, this is not a hard thing, but this is a real thing. This is where the rubber meets the road. Does God get to call any shots in your life? You know, like for me, I'm real laid back. Like, listen, I don't care where we go to eat. I'm going to find something good. I'm going to get a smother burrito. I'm going to get a cheeseburger. You know what I mean? I'm going to get, you know, hard shell tacos, soft tail tacos. I'm going to get queso. I don't care. I'm going to find something. I don't care. I don't, I don't have to call the shots where we eat. Sometimes I have an opinion. Sometimes I might chime in. Most of the time, I don't care. But what are you letting God call the shots in your life? Is he, is he determining if you just move to that other job just because they're going to pay you another dollar an hour? See, because if you would ask him, he would have told you, hey, they're going to close their doors when the beer virus hits. So why don't you just stay where you are and you'll actually have a job. See, and people want to pretend like, no, the Lord's blessing me. He's blessing me with more increase. Did you pray about that? Because maybe he is, or maybe you're just moving over there for another dollar an hour. Does that make sense? I've seen it happen. I don't want it to happen. I'm not trying to anticipate it happening. I'm letting you know if you're led by money, it will more than likely happen. At some point, it will eventually catch up to you that God's not calling the shots in your life or, or, or helping you. Let me, let me say it that way. I did this really cool impression the other day. I, I, can't, I can't repeat it, but it was just powerful. I just pretended like I was a marionette doll. God is not have you ever seen a marionette doll operator person on the streets? And they got the little guy in there doing all this stuff. And it looks like this doll's like playing the saxophone and doing the, doing the moonwalk and all this stuff. I was like, how do they do that? How do they control? Have you ever seen that before? How do they control it so well? They're so good at that. God is not good at that. He is not controlling your life. When I get in my truck and I leave this place, I'm either going to drive 65 down Del Paso or I'm going to drive the speed limit. Shh. Please repeat what you said. She wants to hear it again. When I leave this place, I'm either going to get in my truck and I'm going to drive the speed limit or I'm going to speed. It's on me. I'm either going to overeat and just get a triple cheeseburger and a Coke and two fries. And you know what? Let me get a 20 piece nugget because it's only like five cents more than a 10 piece nugget and just go to town. Or I'm going to be like, ah, I'm going to put my flesh under. I'm going to drink some water and have a salad maybe. You know what I mean? God's not going to make you do anything. You're calling the shots in your life. You're calling the shots in what you feed yourself. Literally. Come on, somebody. There's nothing wrong with endeavoring to be more healthy, to try to actually drink water, to not be dehydrated, to not consume so much sugar. I believe in that. I'm working on that in my life. Those things are real things, and those things are important things. But the most important thing is your spiritual life, your spiritual intake. And I'm telling you, man, the more you feed on God's word, the more you put this on the inside of you, the better your life will get. Because my life is amazing, not because I'm a pastor. My life is amazing, not because I work at a church. My life is amazing because there have been times in my life where I've just pushed myself to make God's word the final authority in my life and not what I want to do or what I think I should do. But it's like, you know what? He's God. I'm going to go ahead and let him make this call. Man, it just doesn't make sense. I don't understand their, their business structure and how they structure their deals and how they, pay their, how they pay their commissions and how they do their bonuses. It doesn't make sense, God. But yet I still have peace about doing it. 
And so it's that moment when you have peace about doing it and it doesn't make sense in your mind. That's where the rubber meets the road. Is God actually helping you and leading you and guiding you into the amazing life that he has for you? Or are you pretending and actually just doing whatever you feel like is right? Because it's in that moment that I made that decision. I was like, this doesn't make sense. And then I did it and I'm like, God, I hate this. This is terrible. Why did I do this? It doesn't make sense. And then over a process of time, I just stayed there. I mean, I had made the right decision. I just didn't know it yet. Over the process of time, a series of events, a certain door opened and it's like, boom, that was it. That was why you had me come here. It didn't make sense to me because I didn't see it. Because I don't see the beginning from the end the way you do. And when it did, when it happened, it was like, wow, he knew. When he told me to go here, he knew that this door would open. He knew that they would make a place for me in the IT department. And I'm like, what is IT? Oh, information technology. I like information. I like technology. I didn't know what the title of my position was, my office. And everybody's like mad at me because I have a desk and an office. And it's like, they gave it to me. What do you want me to do? You're mad because you're still in sales. And I'm now like an IT manager. See, but I put God in the driver's seat, so to speak. I said, God, I, 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 I want your input. I acknowledged him. If you don't do that, you don't get those results. Does that make sense? So fear tolerated will absolutely contaminate your faith. You know, when, when I, um, I was just thinking about the, the different guys that have gone before us in the Bible, and man, they were just like, man, they were so salty. They just got like beat for preaching the gospel, just like we're doing tonight. They got beat for this, like stripes and lashes, and, and they got stoned to death because of what we're doing here. And Paul's like doing it and preaching it and writing books of the Bible, and he gets stung by a viper, and what does he do? Shakes it off in the fire. Why? Because he's feeding on no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He wasn't like, ah, ah, ah. what's the wait time at the, at the Lee, Lee Regional? Let's go. Somebody drive. Ah. Give me a tourniquet. No. Why? Because of what he was feeding on. See, if, if, you're, if you've not been feeding on this, when opportunity comes, whatever it is, it's too late to prepare. You're going to be like, you know, <laughs> you're going to be trying to suck the venom out of your arm and racing to the hospital. Do you understand? Like that's, that's like real life. When something comes up, you're either filled with faith or you're not. And in that moment, it's like, oh, oh, let me get some faith. <laughs> it's too late. That's why you have to feed on faith. When the opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. So I encourage you, take this seriously. He, he was continually feeding on that. He was meditating on that. That, was, that became a part of who he was. Let's talk about our words. I just, the Lord has just continued to put this on my heart um, just so strongly. You know, like we talked about last week, we talked a little bit about what words to put in our mouth for healing. We said we're going to talk a little bit about finances tonight, even though we're not going to talk a lot about finances tonight, because it still comes back to your words, your response. What is coming out of your mouth? Look at these scriptures. You can jot some of the references down. Job twenty two twenty eight. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon their ways. When you decree a thing, it shall be. I like a double cheeseburger, please, with a large fry and large Coke, lots of ice. You know what I mean? When I decree that, guess what happens at the window? That's what they give me. But in your life, what you're speaking over your life absolutely matters. See, we think our words only work at the drive-thru, but that's not how it works. Your words are working every single day. Your words are building your life. Your words are building your future. Your words are building your relationships. Your words are building your marriage. Every single aspect of your life has to do with your words. It has to be real to you. Let's look at some more verses of Scripture. Y'all think I'm making this up? Proverbs 18, 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. See, it is foolish to use our words unwisely, and yet all of us have done it. But here's the thing. We can draw a line in the sand and say, Father, I ask that you help me to, to uh, choose my words wisely. Even before I came out here, I prayed. I said, God, may my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer, and may you just arrest my tongue if I'm about to say something I shouldn't say. Because I want to be used by him, and I want my words to be his words. That translates into our lives. God, I, I want to put your words in my mouth, not just, you know, say whatever. 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If you're sanguine in here, you know what I'm talking about. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Proverbs, uh, Mark 11, 20, 22. Let's go there in your Bible if you got it. I'm going to give you another Proverbs while you're on your way there. Mark 11, chapter 22. We look at this often. So powerful. Proverbs 21, 23. While you're turning to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. It says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. You start watching what you say, guess what? Your life's going to get a lot better. The issues that you're having in your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, you're being all emotional, you're being all, ah, you're all over the place, you have no peace, you have anxiety, you have fear, all of those things are because of what you've been saying. You begin to speak God's word and your life will begin to change. Mark 11, 22. We love these. This is a faith church, y'all. Let me just tell you what faith is. We talk about faith will change your life. Okay, cool. What's faith? Let me just tell you. Thank you for asking. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Okay, he tells us, he, Jesus told us, it's red letters right there, it's underlined. Have faith in God. Okay, Jesus, okay, have faith in God. What does that mean? Let me just go ahead and tell you what that means. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Faith is is absolutely believing and speaking God's word. And we looked at it and we, we put more attention on it in the past that, that that verse of scripture talks about our saying three times. Talks about our believing one time. So like, I, I'm not coming off of this. Your words matter. To the point, not just that you would stop saying the wrong things, but when you're driving to work, you start making declarations over your physical body. You start talking to that symptom. You say, arm, be whole in Jesus' name. Pain, you leave my body in Jesus' name. You take your place of authority. Is it, are people going to look at you weird? Yes. Are people driving next to you like, just be like, oh, I'm on the phone, I'm on the phone. Just kidding, don't lie. <laughs> put, your, put your AirPods in, they'll be like, oh, he's talking on the phone. Body, I speak to you in Jesus' name. Be whole. <laughs> Like, I think he's in an argument. You know what I mean? Who cares what they think about you? What about the authority that Jesus paid for you to have? Beto, good to have you back, man. You got to work at 3 a.m.? Okay, cool. What is coming out of your mouth? We need to take an inventory. We have to be aware. We can't just be flippant with our life. What happens when you're flippant with your life? You get jacked up results. Why? Because we have an adversary, Apollyon, Abaddon, the destroyer waiting around the corner to jack you as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What does that mean? There's some whom he may and there's some who he may not. Come on, come on somebody. He may not devour me. I've already made up my mind. What about you? Everybody say, he may not, he may not devour, me. devour me. See, that's a declaration that you made from your mouth. It's one thing to say, but it's continue to say it and to actually believe it. That's where the power is. Just like when that officer said, freeze, ah, here's a gun. Put your hands in the air. I put my hands in the air. He's got a gun. Okay, he had authority, but he also had a gun. <laughs> but he had the authority to have the gun. And I obeyed, man, what that guy said to do. I get on the ground. He said, get on the ground. Get on the ground. We don't have to go into that story, but here's the thing. He had authority by his department to tell me what to do. Just like at the, the crosswalk. They say, you know, the lights go out, and what do they say? They got their flashlights. Okay, you stop. Okay, you go. They don't physically have the ability to stop my 8,000-pound truck, but they have the authority to stop my truck. See, it's the same way. It's not in our strength, and I'm going to try really hard. And no, it's not that. It's, it's the wisdom and the light and the revelation that comes from opening God's Word and seeing, man, I absolutely have power over all the power of the enemy, and it's right here in my mouth. I can speak to symptoms and they must go. I can resist the devil, he must flee. All of those things get on the inside of you. They become real to you. They become light. They become revelation. This is not as hard as we've made it. Let's keep going. Isaiah 57, 19 talks about the fruit of our lips being created. Anybody like fruit in here? Yo, when I go to California, man, I want, I want like a fresh, fresh orange like right off the tree. Or fresh strawberries straight out the field. Y'all ever had like really, really fresh fruit? Anybody hungry right now? Come on, somebody. 
But think about fruit in, in being good or like fruit like what around here. They make it with that dip and you put that dip and it's got to be straight sugar because it's so good. But you know what I mean? Fruit is good. The fruit of our lips, meaning you're creating good things should be coming because of your words. Talks about the fruit of our lips. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11. You can jot some of these references down. We're not going to put them all on the screen. It says, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. I'm going to give you these real fast. Proverbs 12, 6. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Proverbs 12, 18. There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 13, 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Meaning when you just blah, 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 say whatever and you don't choose your words widely, you will have destruction. Why? Because you're going to end up saying the wrong thing. Why? Because you were flippant with your words. You just said what you felt like saying. You can't just say what you feel like saying. Come on, somebody. We have to choose our words. Just like when Pastor Kathy's around, I preach a little bit different. <laughs> Ooh, never mind. <laughs> I try not to say some of those words. You know what I mean? All right, let's go. Proverbs 15, 4. Wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Perverseness in the Hebrew is distortion. Distortion is, is a twisting and altering of the original form. Perverseness in your speech. Meaning that's not how God intended you to use your words. That's not how God intended for you to use your power, and yet you're destroying your life with your own words. It's a twisting, it's a perversion, it's a distortion of the original power that God gave to mankind. It's amazing. God just, geez, he's so awesome. Not only did he create this system when mankind jacked it up, he made a way for us to be restored and for everything to be fixed in our life. He just fixes everything. It's the best. Proverbs 15, 4 in the Amplified C, MC, BibleGateway.com. Check it out. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, but willful contrariness breaks down the spirit. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise youth useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. We have to be wise. This has to be real to us. This is not just like, I don't know, PG keeps talking about responding. He keeps talking about my words. No, this, is, this has to be real to you. Look, Proverbs 16, 23, the heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Meaning, listen, mouth, we're going to be doing a little bit more silence until I can get something on the inside that's worth coming out. Teach your mouth. When you feel like saying something, talking trash, talking bad about your life, talking bad about your health, talking bad about your job, talking bad about your finances, just stop right there. Just start with that. Say, mm, mm, I'm not going to say nothing right now until I got something better to say. I'm going to look something up. <laughs> Y'all like that? <laughs> okay. Proverbs 16, 24, we're almost done. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Your words absolutely are affecting your life. Here's what I want to tell you, and we're done. These things that I hear people say, we have to address these things because it, it may seem like eh, we're kind of picking it with the chickens, but it's absolutely the difference maker. People who say, I just know God is going to heal me. People say that. And at first glance, so to speak, it's like, oh, wow, they really trust God. If, if, you're, if, you, if you're not really familiar with the word. But my Bible says that by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Past, present, or future. It's the difference maker. Why? Because there's an implication that you're waiting on God. <laughs> Ain't nobody waiting on God. Like Pastor Dean, he's always on time. Sometimes he'd be waiting on me, low-key, keep it real. Sometimes, like, yeah, I'll be there at six-ish. <laughs> Try to say that ish to give me a little, little playroom there. Maybe he'd be waiting on me a little bit, right? And I try to, I'm trying to get better, y'all. Come on, somebody. Punctuality. And Pastor Dean, he's, like, so full of love. He'll just wait. No big deal. But let me tell you who you're not waiting on. It's God Almighty. Because he already sent his word, and he healed you. And that's what faith is. Believing 
Isaiah 53, 5, which says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, now being dead to sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Faith believes that, and it speaks that. It's the difference maker. This is not from a place of arrogance, but I want you to know the truth. You ain't waiting on God. He already made up his mind. He done did it. Same thing in your finances. But you got to get into this word and figure this out for yourself. You have to, the word has to get into you. Faith is believing and speaking. And that's what I'm asking you. How are you responding to the pressure that we are told in the word of God? In this life, you'll face tribulation. What did he say? Be of good cheer. I have overcome. Past, present, or future. Past. It's done. It's finished.